I want to get to your mock draft in a minute, but one of the guys to highlight there is you went with what everybody else is doing here, Brock Bowers to the Jets at 10. Um, I want to yeah. discuss Brock Bowers a little bit. What's that conversation like? Because a lot of people are saying, do you take a tight end in the top 10? And TJ Hawkinson didn't develop till year four. And Kyle Pitts hasn't lived up to the hype after the one year. How do you how do you break down Brock Bowers and where he should go in the draft? Yeah, it, and it's tough when you look at it. You can't debate the track record of tight ends uh, in the top half of round one. But I think we become so obsessive with the, the T and the E next to his name. What if we just call him a slot receiver? How does how does our uh, opinion change, our perspective change? Or let's just call him a dynamic weapon. And usually I'm opposed to that, but that's kind of what he is. I mean, you can line him up out wide. You can line him up in the slot. And you can line him up in the backfield. Make defenses account for him on every single play. Um, and, and the dynamic ways he can make plays down the field, whether it's it could be a jet sweep, it could be working down the seam. It just he, he can has the toughness to work over the middle. His ball skills are outstanding. Uh, and then after the catch, he is such a threat because of the speed, but also the toughness. He he finds those hidden yards where for most tight ends it's a, a five yard gain. He f- makes it an eight yard gain, and then makes all the difference when it's you know third and two and not third and five. So I, I think that there's just so much that he offers, and you're encouraged by the fact that you look at that that 2021 Georgia roster, and you've got guys like George Pickens and Adonai Mitchell and um, a, a lot of talent, and yet it was still Brock Bowers who's leading that team in receiving, uh, it made such a dynamic impact as a true freshman uh, for a national title-winning team. And so it's not like this. he's had to grow to this point. He he was the guy from day one. He's just a little bit different than, you know, because if you draft him, you're not plugging him in as the why and just set it and forget it and run your offense. You have to have an understanding of, okay, we're going to make him a feature part of our offense by doing this, this, and this. And as a general manager, you better trust your play caller to understand how to use a guy like this. So that's a big part of this. And, you know, if you're... Uh, Chris Ballard, and you're looking at that Steichen offense, and you, uh, as long as you guys are on the same page, I, I think that that'd be a great fit for Brock Bowers. Uh, you think about Sean Payton, uh, they're picking what 12th. Uh, Jimmy Graham, what he was uh, in, with the Saints, and you go back to Jeremy Shockey uh, back in the day when Sean Payton coached him. Different types of tight ends, but an understanding of okay, this guy is a little bit different. Uh, let's make sure we're using him in the right way. So. I think it's almost more up. It's, it's the onus is on the coaches to make this work more so than the player because the player has the talent. It's just a matter of okay, can the general manager trust the coaching staff to use him in the right way to justify why we're drafting him in the top ten? And I think Brock Bowers is the type of guy you take a chance on. And that that positionless designation thing is effectively like the Bills did that last year, right? They came out and immediately yeah. said. Dalton Kincaid is basically going to be our big slot. Like, he's not a tight end. Mm-hmm. He's he's going to be replacing Cole Beasley in this offense. Think of him in those terms. That's what he's going to do. And, okay, he didn't have, you know, 1,000 yards or anything, but he was a productive player for them and was getting better as the year went on. No doubt. And he'll be a big part of this offense moving forward. Um, so, yeah, Brock Bowers – even if you know the rookie year isn't a thousand yards receiving, and you know I, as you look move forward for this offense, uh, he's going to be a big part of it. And and the Jets are in a win now uh, situation where, uh, and that's always tough because Aaron Rodgers hasn't necessarily always been the most supportive of rookies coming in right away and being making a big in- impact. He wants veterans. He wants guys who know where to go. But to me, Bowers feels like one of those guys where he's going to know the playbook. He's not going to make a ton of mental mistakes. And the ones that he that he does make, it, he won't make them again. He won't make them a second time. So I do think that's why you look at the Jets. He fits both as a, as a player and what he brings to that offense, but also kind of the makeup of that team and what they're trying to do as a win-now uh, team. And so... Yeah, Bowers is the wild card, right? I mean, he, I think he goes somewhere in the top 15. It's just a matter of, okay, is it going to be the Jets at 10? Is it going to be the Broncos at 12, Colts at 15? Are we going to see some type of trade-up situation or trade-back situation or maybe a wild card team we're not even talking about? He, he really is uh, that wild card of the top half of round one. Yeah, the more the more I think of it, you mentioned it earlier, Dane, when, when a team says a guy can do one thing really well, I mean, if you're not going to get one of those top three receivers – there's some right. team that's going to say, I want Brock Bowers in my offense. I need that guy. So I, I, right. I'm, I'm leaning more toward he becomes a top 10 player that some team is coveting. 